Jesus. <laughs>
praise the Lord, for He is good. Praise the Lord, His mercy endures forever. Oh, we praise the Lord, praise the Lord, for He is good. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Praise the Lord, His mercy endures forever. Oh, praise Him, praise Him, praise the Lord, for He is good. Praise the Lord, for He is good. Praise the Lord, His mercy endures forever. Christmas, and now we're about to step into 2021. And Praise just... Him. <laughs> Praise Him. Go on, take a minute. We're talking about pausing and reflecting. Go ahead. Pause and reflect. Just go ahead. Praise Him. It's over. So many we're people... coming to the end of 2020. So many people have said, Lord, we want to see this year end. But you know what? In the midst of all the chaos and in the midst of all the difficulties and the pandemic and everything we've navigated, we have to stop and reflect and remember God has been good to yes, us. Yes, he has. And Don't faithful. make me cry. Don't make me he's cry. He's sustained us. He's helped us. He's strengthened us. Uh, many of you have been touched in significant ways. We've been touched in significant ways as we've made this journey of 2020 together. And uh, today we want to just pause before we go into 2021. And uh, Craig Maddox, uh, who's our pastor here at World Live International Outreach, one of our pastors, is going to be sharing some thoughts about how to reflect and remember. It's a very powerful uh, segment that you'll see. But Bev and I wanted to share just a bit as we go into that because uh, I've, a scripture that's been a lot to me over the years is Psalm 77. David found himself in a similar situation we've been in 2020. Here's his thoughts in the situation he was in. He said, will the Lord cast off forever? And will he be favorable no more? Has his mercy just ceased? Has his promise failed forevermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? Now, I'm not sure what David was going through, but this was a mighty man of God. And for him to find himself in a place questioning, God, have you just forgotten about me? Is this thing ever going to change? Are we ever going to get out of this? And right in the midst of that meditation, he says these words, but... I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High God. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old, and I also will meditate on all your work and talk of your wonderful deeds. My goodness. And in the midst of this, he just grabs hold of the faithfulness of God because he looks back even in the midst of his pain and in the midst of his problems, 
and sees that God has been faithful and sustained him. Well, he's certainly been faithful to us and sustained us. And even though um, with the pandemic uh, and everyone having to shelter in place, I know it's been so difficult for so many families, but I actually am very thankful for the time that we've had. The Lord has really been giving us clear direction. And really one of the words that the Lord spoke to me uh, in the beginning of the year was clarity. And I think that we all needed to take this time. We, we need a reset. Um, and as much as I love that technology affords us to still come and be with you and, and in, in your convenience, you're able to just pick up your phone and, and tune in and see what God's saying to us and we're sharing out. But honestly, it's just been a time that we all needed a reset. We live such busy lives and technology really can keep you busier than you meant. Um, I, there's an old saying about sin, and I'm not applying this to technology, but that it takes you further than you ever wanted to go and makes you stay longer than you wanted to stay and pay far more than you wanted to pay. Mm. So this is a good reset for all of us. And I like getting back to simple, a, a simplistic lifestyle. Um, we're not there yet, mm -hmm. but I think that that's one of the, the things that we have to reflect upon, that the Lord has given us an opportunity. We can choose whether we want to jump back into the busyness mm. of the world. And, you know, the Lord gave me an acronym for that many years ago, busy, being under Satan's yoke. And I really hate to, to throw that out there. It's not a negative. It's just something that we're aware of. We're paying attention to. What are we actually accomplishing by all the running around? Mm -hmm. And what are we spending our time doing? And so I've enjoyed having this opportunity to reflect on what God is sharing with us, the direction that he's taking us as Word Alive International Outreach, as a family, um, as a couple. And, you know, Kent and I aren't young people any longer. We're, we're moving into, you know, those transition years. They, they call them the golden years. And, of course, for me, that goes right along with holy golden oil. I'm <laughs> looking forward to seeing what God's going to continue to pour out. And I pray that you are as well, that it's not all just about stress and worry and anxiety, that you are experiencing God's sustaining power throughout this and that the joy of the Lord, as we've said, is truly your strength as you are pausing and reflecting. Well, Craig Maddox, uh, he's not communicated a lot publicly. He does, works a lot behind the scenes, but uh, he's a really powerful young man. Even though he's our nephew, we love him very much. He's a, a graduate of West Point. Uh, he was the captain of the baseball team, an Army, a helicopter pilot. Uh, he has a wealth of knowledge and training uh, that's prepared him to serve the Lord. And God dropped a couple of really powerful nuggets in his heart about how to do exactly what Bev talked, just talked to you about, slowing down a mm -hmm. bit, reflecting. Uh, he's talking about the Sabbath and communion. I think you'll be blessed by this. And then when we're through with Craig's talk, Bev and I want to come back and take communion with you and remember in this season how faithful the Lord has been and ask Him to allow us to finish well this reset that He's bringing in our lives so that we can step into 2021 knowing God is in control of our lives. So watch this, and Bev and I'll be back to take communion with you. Hey guys, Craig Maddox here. This morning, I want to talk to you just for a few moments on the power of pause and reflection. This little sliver of time between Christmas and New Year's here in the States, it's an interesting time. I personally love this time of the year, and it's not just because there's a ton of football on TV, right? You see, I'm a little bit of an introvert, believe it or not, and I recharge my battery, so to speak, by having some quiet and alone time. And for most of us, this time of year provides a little bit of a break from our normal routine. The hustle and bustle of the holiday draws to a close after Christmas. Schools are out for winter break. Some of our businesses and offices are closed an extra day or two a week. Travel stops, uh, starts to subside. And the excitement of Christmas morning, for those of us that have little kids, uh, and the excitement of the new toys that they, they receive starts to calm down. And it's as if time is suspended or paused for me and for others for just a brief moment. And it is during that time our society and our culture tends to pause and reflect on the year that has gone by and look forward, you know, to the year ahead. You'll see television programs recount the highlights of the year, uh, sports leagues crown champions, they hand out awards, magazines, if we, anyone still reads those things, uh, they choose a person of the year or the most impactful events of the year. We start to ask ourselves a lot of questions when we pause and reflect. It's during that time we, you know, we are, am I healthy enough? Do I need to read more? Do I need to exercise more? 
I think I might need to stop spending so much, right? More serious questions are we analyze our health choices. We look back over the relationships that may have ended or began during this time. Sometimes we evaluate our career choices or our career, career tra trajectory. We ask ourselves very introspective questions like, am I being the best parent I can be? A lot of that leads to what we know as New Year's resolutions. Now my wife Nicole halfway laughs and halfway cringes this time of year because I am notorious for evaluating just about everything in our home. I'll look at our family budget, I'll pull out a spreadsheet to show her, I'll analyze our vehicles, the paint color in the kitchen, how we're raising our kids, what our calendar should look like going forward, do I need to have a beard or no beard this year, so on and so on and so on. I say all this for a reason. The concept of pausing to reflect, it's not a new one. It's actually part of our natural rhythms given to us by God. To paraphrase the author John Maxwell, pausing to reflect allows growth to catch up with you. This essentially means that if we will pause and reflect on a regular basis, there's no wasted experience, good or bad. We learn and grow from our past failures and successes. And I'd like to take just a few minutes to unpack two of these concepts to hopefully encourage us as we move into 2021. Those two concepts are communion and the Sabbath. Two things we've probably heard a lot about if you've been in the kingdom for any amount of time. First off, communion, also known as the Lord's Supper. It's so much more than a religious ritual. It is a very deeply relational act. It is an act of reflection itself. And communion is really meant to be shared with friends and family. In scripture, prior to Christ's arrest in the gospels, his trial, his crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus shares a deeply intimate meal with his disciples, telling them of his impending future and what it means for them and what it means for the world. It's during this time of communion, he tells his disciples in Luke 22, 19, where it says, and he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and gave it, the, gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In other words, pause regularly, disciples, and do this in remembrance and in reflection of me, in reflection of the kingdom I represent, which is contrary to your current world system, in reflection of the power of transformation we represent to this world, do this in remembrance, do this in reflection of me. You see, there is power in the shared meal together and in the reflection and conversations that take place over a meal, in the shared communion with one another. It's in this special moment or pause, special moment of reflection that we're inspired, we're empowered, we're reinvigorated with the sense of our purpose and what we are called to do on this earth. Through communion, we are reminded of our identity in Christ. We are reminded of the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us. We're reminded that we have access to the Father. In reflection, we remember through our weaknesses, He gives us such strength. In reflection, we remember through our failures, and we've had many, He still provides a way. And in reflection, we remember that even through our successes, it's, it's so that God can be celebrated and glorified throughout the world. And with that remembrance or reflection through communion, we are personally transformed. Then our family is transformed. Our friends are transformed. And ultimately, as we are all transformed, the world around us is transformed for the glory of God. For me personally, the closest group of friends I have today are a result of the regular communion we had together. There was a season of about four years where a group of 12 of us men gathered at the church every Friday morning at 6 a.m. for fellowship and communion. Let me say that again. Four years straight, every Friday, 6 a.m. We would reflect on the previous week's sermons. We'd reflect on our previous week's business failures our relational failures, 
we would reflect on words that the Lord had given us individually or as a group or as a church. We wrestled with Scripture, and we wrestled with each other at times, literally. The point is, Holy Spirit was invited into our midst every time, and He showed up and ministered to us every single time without fail. Our lives were transformed radically because, in my opinion, we were willing to pause pause our personal activities, reflect, and commune with one another in the Holy Spirit. Now, it's been a few years since we last gathered regularly, but there's a bond between those gentlemen that exists that they would do anything for anyone in that group at the drop of a hat, and they still do it today. I say we're not friends, we're really brothers. We're still living off the benefits of those times together, and I want to encourage you those listening, that the same power, that same relationship, that same sense of fulfillment is available to you and your family as we make communion a priority in our lives in 2021. Now, second thing I want to talk to you about is the power of the pause and reflection and the Sabbath. There's one more foundational principle of reflection. I want you to consider it today, and that's our weekly Sabbath. And please, let me be transparent right up front. I'm terrible, maybe even grossly negligent in keeping the Sabbath principle. I just like to stay busy, and that's not good. As many of you may already know, the concept of the Sabbath, it originated with God resting on the seventh day of creation. In Genesis 2-3, it says, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Mark chapter 2, verse 27 reads, Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. I like the Good News translation. It says, And Jesus concluded, The Sabbath was made for the good of human beings. They were not made for the Sabbath. I like to look at Sabbath as a gift. At the most basic level, it really is a gift from God to his people. It's not a religious obligation. It's a gift of rest, it's a gift of time, it's a gift of peace. It really is an opportunity to disengage from our regular routine and to engage more intentionally in the presence of the Lord, to reflect on Him and to reflect on ourselves as well. Unfortunately, for me and many of us, and again, I rank right up there with the worst in this category at times, Many of us forsake this gift and we continue to submit ourselves to a world system that keeps us busier than ever in human history. We tend to be overworked, don't we? We tend to be overextended in our social obligations and we are overly tethered to our technology and our social media notifications. And sometimes, in some cases, we've just lost the intentionality of pausing unplugging, and relaxing with the Lord on a regular basis. Whatever our situation, there's good news. Just like every day has a new beginning, every month has a new moon. God graces us with a Sabbath gift each week, and there are promises that come from it. At the basic level, it allows us to do one thing. It allows us to evaluate and correct our mistakes. Who doesn't like that, right? When we pause and when we reflect in the presence of the Lord, He is always faithful to reveal our missteps and mishandlings of situations. And I've had quite a few. Many times as I've reflected on the Sabbath, back over my weekly interactions at work, at home, or with my friends, the Holy Spirit is so kind, and He'll remind me of how I may have spoken too harshly to my children, misjudged the interactions or the intentions of my coworker, or even been selfish with my time or my money when I could have been generous and I could have been a blessing. How cool is that, though, that he created a weekly Sabbath that allows us the opportunity to remember and then go to that person, ask for forgiveness, to essentially be a repairer of a breached relationship, to heal a hurting heart, or to reorder some of our relational priorities. Who in their right mind would turn down that weekly opportunity to correct our mistakes and to do it with humility? You see, 
I've got a lot of practice in this area, unfortunately. My wife, Nicole, and I have four beautifully sweet, very passionate daughters, but they can get real territorial about their favorite stuffed animal or their Barbie doll in a split second. And when that passion rears up in those girls, they can get really loud, and unfortunately, it pushes all the wrong buttons in me, their dad. And I hate to admit, on more occasions than I, than I really care to admit, I've not corrected my girls in the kindest of ways, and I've lost my temper. I've been quick to judgment on their behavior, but the Lord has always been faithful in those Sabbath moments of reflection. To show me the error of my ways and show me his love for them and his love for me despite my mishaps. And he's always given me the courage and the opportunity to go to my girls and tell them I was wrong, to ask them for forgiveness and to heal that breach in our relationship. I want to encourage you today. There's so much power in the words, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Proverbs 16, 24 says, Kind words are like honey, and it's sweet to the soul, and it's healthy for the body. We have an advantage, guys. We have a grace opportunity each week to Sabbath with the Lord and be a source of healing to our families and those around us. Not only is the Sabbath gift an opportunity to correct our mistakes, it's a great opportunity to listen. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Allow Him to process and direct your future. Psalm 37, 23 reads, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He, the Lord, delights in His way. How encouraging is that fact, that the Lord delights in our way, in the way of our futures, and that he'll actually direct our steps. We should take that, guys, as a promise, a guarantee, that if we will take time for a weekly Sabbath, whatever day, whatever time, whatever that looks like for you, if we would reflect, if we would take time to pause, unplug, reflect on the Lord, he will order our upcoming week. He will speak wisdom and counsel into your business decisions. He will give you words of knowledge. He will open our eyes to things to come. He will prepare our hearts to receive people in certain situations, difficult situations. The possibilities are endless. Why would I forsake that opportunity every week? But I do. We do. But the good news is the Lord is merciful and He gives us this opportunity not once a year, not once a lifetime, every week. Every week there's an opportunity to Sabbath to pause, reflect, and to receive His goodness for our lives. That's exciting. There's so much more we could talk about with regards to the benefits of Sabbath rest, and we'll likely talk about those more in the next few weeks. But this is just what the Lord laid on my heart to share these two simple, very simple foundational principles with you today. The power of pause and reflection as found in communion and in the Sabbath. Together, can we take some time maybe today, in the next few days? Can we pause? Can we reflect over the next few days and consider the benefits of the, the communion gift and the Sabbath gift? And can we resolve to make this a regular part of our routine, a part of your life with the Lord? My prayer today is, Holy Spirit, lead us to rediscover the beauty of and the power in your gifts of communion and the Sabbath. And as we take action to make your priorities our priorities, Lord, meet us there with your supernatural presence. Guide us, keep us, keep us in your ways, not our ways. Slow down time if you have to, so we can get on board. All that your name be glorified in all we do, Lord. Amen. I bless you all. I tell you, the Lord really spoke through Craig to us today. Yes, he did. Embracing the Sabbath and communion, two key elements to be able to reflect and remember and pause so that God can instruct us and lead us into our future purpose, into our destiny. And so hopefully you're prepared to take communion with us today. If you're not prepared, hopefully after you watch this, you can go and prepare communion and have it there with your family or friends or those in your sphere of influence. But we just wanted to pause before we enter 2021 and just thank the Lord, thank Him for His goodness his mercy, His grace, His faithfulness to us this past year. 
and uh, just rehearse his promises. Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, which tells me it's important to pause and remember the benefits of the Lord. What are the benefits? He forgives all our iniquities. He heals all our diseases. He crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies, satisfies our mouth with good things so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And so today we know that the promises of God for our future are yes and amen. And they're not based on our work or our effort. They're based solely in the covenant promises of God. So if you're prepared to take communion with us, we take the bread and we lift it up to the Lord. And we just remember you, Lord Jesus. You said as often as we do this, do it in remembrance of you. We remember your work on the cross. We remember your suffering and your pain. We remember, Lord, that when you came and you blessed us and your body was broken for us so that we could be removed from the curse and enter into the blessings of heaven, we remember your blood shed for, for us from the foundations of the earth. We remember the crown of thorns that you wore in your back that was whipped with stripes so that we could be healed. Lord, we do this, you said, often in remembrance of you. We remember you today, Lord, and the price you paid for us to live out our purpose and our destiny. And so, Lord, no matter what we face right now, no matter what circumstance or situation, we remember your body broken for us so that we could be made whole. And so today, we partake of the bread of life, your body broken for us in Jesus' name. Amen. We break it and partake by faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the bread of life. Lord, we lift up the cup. We thank you for your blood shed. Lord, we thank you for your covenant grace and your covenant promises. You said, where there is no bloodshed, there is no remission of sins. Lord, I thank you that in this season, you're giving us a reset. You're altering us. You're correcting us. You're instructing us. And you're allowing us to get in divine alignment with your heavenly purposes so that we can step into this new year with great grace and great blessings and great favor. So, Lord, we thank you as we remember your blood shed for us and we partake by faith in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My goodness. Whew, thank such you for a your presence. presence. Whew. Lord, we just thank you. We just pause a minute. We don't want to rush past this, this moment. Lord, just anybody watching right now that's just, just needing a touch, needing encouragement, yes, Lord. needing strengthened, needing healed, needing forgiven, needing blessed. Lord, we just pause a moment in your presence. Lord, you said where two or three are gathered, there you are in the midst of us. We're gathered here today online, and you are right here with us. And Lord, you said and you promised in your presence, right here, right now, whatever we would ask, where two or three agree, touching anything, whatever we ask, it would be done by our Father in heaven. So Father, we just pray right now for whatever needs are represented today, whatever reset buttons need to be pushed, whatever new direction needs to come, whatever revelation needs to be poured out, whatever physical body or ailment needs to be healed, whatever solutions we need to certain problems we don't want to take into 2021 with us. Lord, we thank you right now that your Holy Spirit is working and moving in our midst even now. So Lord, we thank you for it and we praise you for it. In your mighty and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Gracious. Praise God. Wow. We've enjoyed our time with you today. We appreciate Craig sharing that powerful word with us. And I'm um, sure we'll be connecting here on social media and online between now and next Sunday. But be blessed, be well, be safe. And we look forward to what God's going to do in 2021. We love you guys very much.